This video is about equivalence relations. So first, let's talk about what the definition is. An equivalence relation, R, is a binary relation. So that just means it's, a pairing, it's comparing two things, right? Binary means two. Uh, so it compares two things on some set, A, we're going to call our set A, such that for everything in A, all X, Y, and Z in A, the following three conditions hold. Okay, and their names are the reflexive condition, the symmetric condition, and the transitive condition. Okay, well, what does reflexive mean? It means that for every x in the set, x is related to itself. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to give you some concrete examples of this in just a second. So for now, just bear with me on the notation. So x is always related to itself. The symmetric condition says that if x is related to y, then y must also be related to x, right? So essentially, an equivalence relation has to go both ways. If one thing is related to something else, then the reverse has to be true as well. And then the last is transitive, and that is if x is related to y and y is related to z, then x is also related to z. So this property is sort of um, goes down a chain if you want, right? x is related to y, but y is related to z, which means that you can just say immediately that x is related to z. Okay, so if a binary relation meets these three requirements, then it's called an equivalence relation. So let's just ex explore this um, in an example. So let's consider the greater than or equal to relation on the real numbers. So this blackboard R is how you denote the real numbers. Is greater than or equal to an equivalence relation? So is it true that for any real number x, that x is greater than or equal to x? Right, is that always true? Yes, it is, right? x is equal to x, so certainly x is greater than or equal to x. Okay, let's go ahead and skip down here to 3. If x is greater than or equal to y, and y is greater than or equal to z, is x greater than or equal to z? So you may want to ask yourself if this is true. And this part is also true. Okay, so far so good. But what about symmetric? So if x is greater than or equal to y, is y greater than or equal to x? No. Right, so because this fails the symmetric condition, right, condition number two, this is not an equivalence relation. So it is reflexive, it is transitive, but it's not symmetric. Okay, so let's consider a couple that are equivalence relations. So here I've got a few written down. <clears throat> some of some examples of equivalence relations are the equal sign on the real numbers, right? So a number is always equal to itself. And then for symmetric, if you imagine that 3 equals 6 halves, then that means that 6 halves also equals 3, right? And it's also transitive. So if 3 equals 6 halves and 6 halves equals 9 thirds, then 3 equals 9 thirds. <clears throat> okay, so this is an example of an equivalence relation. We've also already seen an equivalence relation as it relates to graph theory, and that is isomorphism of graphs. So <clears throat> a graph is always isomorphic to itself. That's reflexive. If two graphs are isomorphic, right, then it doesn't matter if you say graph A is isomorphic to graph B or graph B is isomorphic to graph A, because that just means their structure is the same either way, so it's symmetric. And then if you have a chain of isomorphism, that means the first and last graphs in the chain are also going to be isomorphic, so that's the transitive <clears throat> condition. Okay, and then one more. So I've got here in quotes the even relation on the integers. So this is essentially a parity check. Parity just means even or odd. So if you think about the even numbers, right? So a number in an integer, right? So that's denoted with this blackboard Z. An integer is related to another integer if they are both even, right? So 
<clears throat> of course, if you take an even integer, it's related to itself because it's still going to be even. If you take two even integers, they'll be symmetric, right? Like 2 is related to 4 and 4 is related to 2 because they're both even. And if you have a chain of even integers, the first and the last ones will still both be even, right? <clears throat> so you'll get transitivity as well. Okay, so here's some examples of things that work. Uh, and the last thing I want to mention about equivalence relations is that they partition the set that they're dealing with into equivalence classes. So first of all, this word partition has a very specific meaning in math. It means it divides up the set that you're dealing with into disjoint sets whose union make up the entire set. So let me go back to this relationship here. So this parity check, right, the even or odd relation on the integers, if you think about all the stuff that's related, all the even integers will be related, all the odd integers will be related, and so those represent two equivalence classes, and together the evens and the odds don't have anything in common, but if you put them together, you get all of the integers, right? So that's what it means to partition a set. So <clears throat> this is a sort of important idea, is that all the stuff that's related to each other is one class. And if you look at all the classes created by that equivalence relation, then you get all of the set that you are dealing with in the first place. Like here the set's the real numbers, here the set's the set of all graphs, and then down here in the third example it's the set of integers. So this idea of equivalence classes is important. If you are sort of fuzzy on what a partition means, you should maybe look it up either in the book or just uh, via a search engine. Um, but <clears throat> this is an important idea. So that's our introduction to equivalence classes and to equivalence relations in general.